everyone. I have a book to tell you about today, um, which is one of my favourite books from my childhood. It's this one, um, Arabelle's Raven by Joan Aitken. And it's illustrated by Quinton Blake, a very famous illustrator who has illustrated books um, for Roald Dahl and for David Williams among just a couple of them. So you'll recognise the illustrations, they're really, really funny. Um, this is a very funny book. Um, it's not a serious book, it's quite mad. Lots of crazy things happen. Um, this book is in the uh, yellow section of our library. It's a 5.4 on the accelerator reader level. Um, but it's a very short, quick read. You can see there, um, it's not particularly long. It's about a raven. So a raven, if you think about what raven is, a raven is um, a type of crow, a large black bird. Um, and one day, um, Arabelle's dad, is, he's a taxi driver and he's on his way home um, and he sees this black object in the road and a motorcyclist kind of runs over him. So he stops to check out what on earth this weird black object was um, and scoops up um, the raven and takes him home. Um, and the story is about how um, he becomes part of the family and the friendship really does develop between Arabelle and Mortimer. I forgot to tell you actually, his name is Mortimer. So um, yes, yeah, a lovely friendship that happens between them. Um, I'd just like to read you the first page of, of how Arabelle's dad um, finds Mortimer because it is really funny. Um, just talking about funny things. There's a bit in the story, can you see here? Where um, one morning they come downstairs and find Mortimer inside the fridge and he has eaten all of the things inside the fridge. So he does crazy things like that every day, really naughty things. It's very funny, it's a laugh out loud kind of a story. Um, okay, so. On a stormy night in March, not long ago, a respectable taxi driver named Ebenezer Jones found himself driving home very late through the somewhat wild and sinister district of London, known as Rumbury Town. Mr Jones was passing the long, desolate piece of land called Rumbury Waste, when in the street not far ahead, he observed a large, dark, upright object. It was rather smaller than a bag of golf clubs, but bigger than a motorway cone. And it was moving slowly from one side of the street to the other. Mr Jones had approached to within about 20 yards of this object when a motorcyclist with a pillion passenger shot by him at a reckless pace and cutting in very close. Mr Jones braked sharply looking in his rear view mirror. When he looked forward again, he saw that the motorcyclist must have struck the upright object in passing, for it was now lying on its side just ahead of his front wheels. He brought his taxi to a halt. Not but what I dare say I'm being foolish, he thought, but you can't see something like that happen without stopping to have a look. He got out of his cab. What he found in the road was a large black bird, almost two feet long, with a hairy fringe around its beak. At first he thought it was dead, but as he got nearer, it opened one eye slightly and then shut it tight again. Poor thing, it's probably stunned, thought Mr Jones. His horoscope in the taxi driver's herald that morning had said, due to your skill, a life will be saved today. Mr Jones had been worrying as he drove home because up until now he had not, so far as he knew, saved any lives that day except by avoiding pedestrians recklessly crossing the road without looking. This will be the life I'm due to save, he thought. Must be, for it's five to midnight now. And he went back to his cab for the bottle of brandy and teaspoon he always carried in the toolkit in case lady passengers felt faint. It's not at all easy to give brandy to a large bird lying unconscious in the road. After five minutes, there was a good deal of brandy on the cobbles and some up Mr Jones's sleeve and some in his shoes. But he could not be sure that any had actually gone down the bird's throat. The difficulty was that he needed at least three hands, one to hold the bottle, one to hold the spoon and one to hold the bird's beak open. If he prized open the beak with the handle of the teaspoon, 
It was sure to shut again before he had time to reverse the spoon up and tip in some brandy. Suddenly a hand fell on Mr Jones' shoulder. Just what do you think you're doing? inquired one of the two policemen who had left their van and were standing over him. I'll leave it there. I don't want to spoil the story. So if you want to find out more and find out um, what crazy things um, Mortimer and um, Arabelle get up to, give this book a read. It is really, really funny.